forgiven to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
God, you show forth your almighty power, chiefly by reaching out to us in mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace, strengthen our trust in your promises, and bring all the world to share in the treasures that come through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading today is from 1 Kings, chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he, went, so he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord of the God of Israel, The jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. Here ends the reading.
psalm today is Psalm 46, and we will read it responsibly by whole verse. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. When they Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God will sign throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The second reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 24 through 28. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one. But he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Here ends the reading. I invite the young people forward. Oscar and Felix, right, pop right up there. There we go. You do have boots on. Those are awesome <laughs> boots. Those are like stomping boots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I have a question. A couple questions for you this morning. We're gonna um, see what all you guys can do or maybe not do. So um, why don't you show me if you know how to hop on one foot? Go ahead and. Let me see. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. Awesome. Excellent. All right. Okay. Uh, you probably, yeah, you just keep going and going, huh? All right. Have a seat. Let me see. Okay. So I just heard Javar whistling. So how many of you know how to whistle? That one kind of takes some practice. Let me hear it. Okay. All right. We're getting that right. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. How many of you? Um, oh, how many of you can pat your head and rub your stomach? Oh, that takes some practice, doesn't it? You got to figure out how to do it. Yep, yep. Excellent, excellent. All right, so how many of you can do a triple back handspring into a round off down the. Th- <laughs> anyway, huh. that was a little bit tougher, huh? Now, if somebody had studied, let's say, gymnastics a good part of their life, that probably wouldn't be much of a challenge for them, right? Right? Um, or so maybe those of you who have played sports, um, baseball or football or does some of that, you could, I could say, okay, so you're going to run a, um, give me something. <laughs> right? You're going you're gonna, to, what do they call it in basketball when you stand and block people? A pit, a screen, thank you. Right, yeah, then can see, obviously that's not my talent. <laughs> right, there are different things that we can do. And so, and so there's things, if I was to say to you, how many of you know how to pray? I 
oh my goodness, lots of things that you would know how to do in sports, right? What if I said, do you know how to pray? Yeah, right? Because you know what? There's no specific set way, right? All you, like, Dear God, thank you. Amen. Yeah. Right? Now, if I ask you, could you pray for me the Lord's Prayer? Maybe you could do that off the top of your head. Maybe not, right? If I asked if you could pray out loud the entire book of Romans, how would you do? No, right? There are some things that seem really harder or a lot like you have to practice a lot work a lot and there are some things that you're like oh yeah i can just do that whistle right somewhere along the line you learned how to do it but now you can just do it right in the gospel today we're hearing a little bit about how some things are really easy for people okay so in this case there are a lot of really rich people okay there are a lot of really really rich people and they're just giving money to the treasury of the, of the church. Right? That's not too hard if you have a lot of money, right? I'll just reach down here in my pocket, pull out some money, and there you go. There was nothing hard about that. But then we also hear about a woman who has, are you ready? This is how much money she has to her name. One penny. I say two copper coins worth about one penny. That's what she has in all the world. And she also gives that to the treasury. Do you think that was easy for her to do? Yeah. You do? Why? No. no? Why? Right. If you only had one penny in your pocket, it'd be awfully hard to give it away, wouldn't it? That's all you have to live on. It's not much, but it's something besides nothing. Right? But she gave it. She said, I, I, this, is, this is for God. And Jesus is showing the people and saying basically to them, you know, sometimes things are going to be really easy. It wasn't too hard for rich people to give money. And sometimes things are going to be really hard. This is all I can deal with right now. And Jesus says, but I'm here. That's why I'm here. To care for times that are easy. To care for times that are really hard to care for each and every one of you at all times. What a blessing to know that we have a God who walks with us, not just in our happy, yay, I can do it times, but also in those times where we struggle and we don't know what to do or how hard life might be. God comes and he is with us through all of those times. Let's have a prayer. God, we thank you for all of the things that we can do for all the blessings and gifts that you give us in our life. But we also thank you that you are with us when we struggle. When we can't do what we want or what we should do, you are still with us and you help to guide us in those times. We thank you for your presence. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Let's put that one. to Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes, who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had all that she had to live on. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Oh, look at the happy family on Easter in this picture. To glance at it, you would probably think, hey, that looks like a happy family gathering for the Easter holiday with everyone in their best and newest outfits. Sort of. <laughs> yes, we were a happy family, but this picture doesn't tell you much about us or about what was going on at the time. I can tell you that right before this picture was taken, my soft-spoken father, who most of you saw just last week, had taken my brother and myself aside and said in one of the strictest tones I had ever heard come out of his mouth, if you don't suck it up and smile for your mother, we will have words later. So there are smiles. <laughs> And you can't know why my father felt the need to pull us aside. But I'll give you a little background. This is Easter 1987. I was in seventh grade and my brother was in ninth. The background of the picture is Trinity Seminary, which my mom was finishing up her senior year there. Notice the collar. She's about to graduate. Two weeks before the picture, I had fallen down a flight of concrete stairs and gotten 12 stitches in my head, which by this picture had been removed, but I had temporary huge replacement glasses, <laughs> a gash on my forehead, hence the comb down bangs, and I was wearing the outfit that I had actually fallen down the stairs in because I was showing off my first pair of high heel shoes with my new <laughs> outfit when I was asked to get laundry from the basement. So this outfit had already been washed and bleached of the blood <laughs> before I wore it. We had also just gone to my mother's final interview with the church she was going to be serving, which happened to be two and a half hours away from where we currently lived. So in this picture, both my brother and I are aware that during the rapidly approaching summer, we would be moving away from the friends we had had for the past seven years and start over at a new school for eighth grade and sophomore year, respectively. Something that took my very introverted brother a very long time to forgive my parents for. I wasn't super thrilled either. So when you look at the photo, it may not seem that different from any other family photo for Easter. But when I look at the photo, I know so much more of what is going on behind that story. What seems a little can be a lot. And what's a lot sometimes means very little. Both our Old Testament story and our gospel this morning are dealing with little and lots. And what they mean to different people. Elijah's request seems so very little. May I have a drink of water and a piece of bread? And yet to that widow, it is everything she has in the world. You are asking my life of me. Even though she has no real hope that the morsel can possibly sustain herself or her son, for Elijah to ask for it is possibly the largest request he could make of her at that moment. Ask me anything but for a drink and some bread. And Jesus' observation at the treasury are not to make anyone feel better or worse about themselves, but to show his followers what it truly means to give yourself to God. Not your money, yourself. Because although the widow gives money, how much difference would that penny truly have made in her life? but to entrust all that she has to God, to essentially make her cake and prepare to eat it and die like the widow in the Old Testament, she is trusting a lot in God to sustain her. Contrast that with those showing off how much they have and demanding the glory for giving it. See how much I have and I'm giving? Well, what seems a little can be a lot. And what's a lot can sometimes equal very little. 
I don't think it's a coincidence that both stories are about widows today. I mean, beyond the group of people who sat down eons ago and decided to put down which Old Testament lesson should be read with which gospel, I think the stories are about widows because during the Old Testament time, during Jesus' time, widows were one of the most vulnerable group of people around. Women could rarely hold property, have respectable jobs, keep themselves fed with no husband. They relied on their husbands for all support, and if their husband died and neither his family or her family were willing or capable of helping, she faced a long and desperate road. Sometimes sending to have, some, having to send her children off to be raised by others or sold into servitude. For a long time, that was the case. Perhaps we have even heard stories of that not that long ago. Stories like this, where people have little to no options. And in any case, these two women and these two scriptures this morning have very little hope of survival. And yet both of them carry a lot of trust and hope in God. What would you do with one penny to your name? One rice cake in your pantry? Or perhaps you have more than enough money and food, but you're down to your last nerve. Your only hope. Your growing concern. Your biggest worry. Maybe everyone else sees the smiling picture. But you're dealing with all the pain and the heartache and the anger that no one else can see. And you wonder if, like that widow of Zarephath, you can afford to not be afraid. To trust a messenger from God or at least one of his people around you. Whether you could give all you have over to God when there's some security in holding something close, even if it really isn't worth anything. What seems a little can be a lot. And what's a lot can sometimes mean very little. So once I get past my first emotional response to that photo, I think what must have been going through my mother's mind, you can't tell from her smile, but she knows her call is uprooting her family, breaking her children's heart, making them angry at her. Even after she had commuted from Sunday to Thursday for three years to go to school, and she knew God was calling her. But I don't know what she's thinking. And I see my grandfather's face, who I love so dearly, who died just after Easter 1989. That was the last Easter he spent with us. And I wish I had known that. And I think about how hard it was to move but how glad I am now for the people I met, the experiences I had, the courage it gave me to live other places like, let's say, Illinois. Everything was so huge at that moment, before that picture. And yet now it's such a small part of my life. One more story to tell along my journey. God saw me through, saw the whole group in the photo through, in a little, in a lot, God will see us through. You know that I am not one to say that everything has a purpose or that all things are a part of God's plan. I even wince a little when I hear God never gives us more than we can handle because yikes, how much can we handle? But what I will never hesitate to say is that God is with us through it all so that he can handle what we cannot. God told Elijah that a widow would provide before he ever showed up to Zarephath. 
So that when she couldn't see the hope through the despair, Elijah could assure her that God's presence was there and grace would continue. And Jesus, watching at that treasury, saw everyone from the widow, whom he called on all people to care for, to the scribes and the rich people who searched for glory, you know to fill something missing in their life and to whom he also offered life beyond riches. He saw everyone that day. And he saw beyond the surface more than their status, their wealth, their appearance, or their smiles. He saw the stories behind their image that day. And Jesus was there to be with them all. Because for God, nothing is too little about us for his notice. And he notices a lot about our struggles and our joys, our worries, our hope, our fear, everything. God wants us to know that we were not alone. We are not alone. He is there to help us, to hold us. That he gave us Jesus and through Jesus the Holy Spirit, which Romans chapter 8 tells us, intercedes on our behalf with sighs too deep for words. So even when we can't speak our pain, God still hears it. God was there for those two widows. He was there for the scribes, the rich people, the disciples, and he will be there for us in a little and in a lot. God is there for us. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
God gathered here and throughout the world, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. O oh God, preserve your church from empty piety. Stir up our will to act with mercy and compassion. Keep our bishops, pastors, teachers, and all who proclaim your good news strong in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Provide all living things with sufficient food and clean water. Make us ever mindful of the farmers and laborers who supply us with food. And open our hands to share what we have received. We ask that you calm the winds and fire in California. Still the waves and wind that threaten coastlines. Change the hearts and minds of those who seek to harm others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Awaken our nation to care for veterans and others who have experienced the stress and trauma of war or other military conflicts. Inspire us to promote the well-being of those who have put themselves in the service of others. And watch over all those who still serve in uniform here and abroad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bow down to meet those who are trampled or forgotten. Lift up the orphan and widow so that we may see them and be reminded to help all in need. Greet your people with mercy and give new life to those who feel overwhelmed, broken, ill, or in grief. We remember especially this morning Martin and Irene, Dixie, Lee, Julia, Marilyn, Don, Melissa, Tim, Pat, Pauline, Steve, Pam, Marcia, Brayden, Marion, Susan, Irma, Doug, Brent, and all those who rest in our hearts and our minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bind us together with the saints of every time and every place until we join them around your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enfold all things in your compassion, O God, and bring us into your life through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Now make us bold to pray as your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you always his peace. Amen.